Welcome to the Draft Utopia NFL Holiday Edition Part 1 here on Draft Utopia NFL Digest for Week 15. Since the holiday season's coming up, we figured we'll give our fans four sets of videos with four games breakdowns for the holiday season within the next four days up at DraftUtopia.com. For before we get straight into the NFL highlights, I have to congratulate the North Allegheny Tigers, my old high school, for winning their second PIAL title in three years. My only regret is you guys didn't do it in 09 when I graduated, but congrats. Let's get straight to the games. Start in Lincoln Financial Field where the Cincinnati Bengals clashed with the Philadelphia Eagles. The Bengals led 10-0 after one quarter. Nick Foles would find Jeremy Macklin with a first down on the play. Foles throws to Riley Cooper, which leads to a touchdown. Trent Cole recovers a forced fumble. This time, Colin Jenkins gets the fumble. Eagles up 13-10 as the Eagles get two field goals off a of fumble. Foles throws an interception to Leon Hall. Bryce Brown fumbles the ball. Wallace Gilberry recovers a fumble for a touchdown. Cincinnati wins 34-13. After trailing 13-10 at the half, Cincinnati drops 24 unanswered points in the Eagles. Besides Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis having 106 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown on 25 carries. The main difference was the Bengals scoring 31 of their 34 points off of Eagles turnovers. Philadelphia had five turnovers in the game. When you have five turnovers in an NFL contest, that is simply unacceptable. The next game took place in the Georgia Dome where the New York Giants face the Atlanta Falcons. First quarter, Eli Manning throws a pass to Asante Samuel. That would result in a six-yard interception return. Falcons have the ball in the red zone. Michael Turner gets a rushing touchdown off the turnover, and that puts Atlanta up 7-0. Lawrence Tynes with a field goal attempt. It goes wide left. Falcons would lead 14-0 as Matt Ryan and the Falcons capitalize off that possession. Second quarter, Atlanta in the red zone. Thanks to a Thomas DeKalb turnover, Matt Ryan, 8 for 9, 80 passing yards, one touchdown, no interceptions through the first half. Atlanta leads 17-0 thanks to the turnover heading into halftime. Third quarter, Matt Ryan to Julio Jones makes it 24-0. Atlanta would lead 27-0. Fourth quarter, Atlanta would get another touchdown. They would go on to win 34-0. Matt Ryan had three touchdowns, no picks. Eli Manning had zero touchdowns and two picks. Quarterback play was one of the factors in this game. Atlanta was up 17-0. You have to applaud the Giants' pass protection unit for keeping Atlanta from getting a sack on Eli Manning, but Eli made some horrible throws in this game. He looked flustered in the Georgia Dome, didn't look like his normal self, and the Giants lost their ability to focus in this contest. The bottom line is Atlanta showed up, the New York Giants didn't. Falcons get a win. Let's go to MNT Bank Stadium where the Denver Broncos face the Baltimore Ravens. Opening play, Peyton Manning overthrows Demarius Thomas after the kickoff. Kerry Williams stops no Sean Moreno for a loss of down on second down. Broncos go three and out on third and 11. Jacoby Jones with a nice punt return on the play. Denver recovers a fumble on third down. Manning with a play action pass to Eric Decker. A nine-yard gain on the play. Backup rusher Ronnie Hillman, a rookie out of San Diego State. He would convert the first down the following play. It, one thing that stood out in this contest was the Baltimore Ravens had four of their five leading tacklers out due to injuries. Baltimore, they started out 9-2. and two. They've been sluggish as of late. Manning went 5-for-8 with 42 passing yards through the first seven and a half minutes of this contest. Ravens keep the Broncos from getting a first down on third and seven in the red zone. Denver would have to settle for a field goal as the Broncos lead three to nothing. Pernell McPhee wins the one-on-one -on -one matchup with backup right guard Manny Ramirez to sack Peyton Manning on third down. Flacco throws an incompletion on third down. Second quarter, Denver leads seven nothing in first downs over Baltimore as Denver is in the red zone. The Broncos would get another first down and a 10-0 lead. Baltimore still doesn't have a first down, which is the one thing I noticed as this game progressed. Baltimore 0 for 6 on third down conversions in the first half. Ravens get a field goal in this third quarter. They fail to capitalize on an opportunity. Manning to Eric Decker 
That would result in another Broncos touchdown, 24-3 to Broncos. Manning hands the ball off to Noshawn Moreno. Excellent run blocking by Ramirez and Orlando Franklin on the right side of the offensive line. Denver leads 31-3. Denver's offense was demolishing the Baltimore Ravens. Overall, as a team, Denver just was the better team in the first three quarters. Offense, defense, and special teams. Fourth quarter, Dennis Pitta caught two receiving touchdowns at tight end, courtesy of Joe Flacco. It's not enough. As average Joe and the Baltimore Ravens lose, Denver Broncos win 34-17. The bottom line in this game, the main factor was 0 for 6 on third down conversions in the first half. The reason that was the main difference was mainly due to the fact that Denver's up 17-0 at the first half. You can't convert first downs in the first half when Peyton Manning's up 17-0 on you. That's going to lead to a long day. You're going to lose a lot of contests. And this is an example. You've got to watch the tape here, and your quarterback has to sh show up and bring his A game against Peyton Manning because you can't get first downs. You're going to be one and done in the NFL playoffs. This is a game that the Ravens need to watch a lot of tape on because they struggled in the first half. Sure, Dennis Pitt had seven receptions, 125 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns for all you fantasy players. That doesn't matter, though, because Denver – simply owned this game in the first three quarters. Despite Baltimore's glimmer of hope in the fourth quarter, it was too little too late, considering Denver was up 31-3 after three quarters. The Green Bay Packers went to Soldier Field to take on their division rival, the Chicago Bears. Green Bay won this game back in Week 2. This time, they're in Chicago. First quarter, Aaron Rodgers gets sacked. Then he gets sacked again by Julius Peppers. Rodgers struggled to read the defense early. Granted, he has one of the worst pass protection units in the NFL thanks to some injuries at offensive tackle. Still, you have to credit the Bears' defense for the way they performed in the first quarter. On one of those sacks, it looked like Rodgers had enough time to make a throw. The Bears were covering. They were doing all the little things correctly despite the absence of Brian Urlacher. Costanzo, Blake Costanzo was on top of his game at, as a backup middle linebacker for Urlacher. Reading Rodgers... So, credit the Bears early. Jay Cutler gets sacked on third down. Poor job by Chicago protecting Cutler. Both defenses did well on third down, making stops in the first quarter. Second quarter, Mason Crosby field goal attempt from 43 yards wide right. Mason Crosby used to be one of the NFL's elite kicker. What has happened with Mason Crosby? He's had a bad year in 2012. He's missed 12 field goals on the year. It's simply unacceptable to miss a kick when the game is scoreless. Jake Cutler with a 15-yard pass to Brandon Marshall. Marshall gets a touchdown thanks to some blocks by the Bears' tight ends. That gives Marshall enough space to open up, take off, get the touchdown that puts Chicago up 7 to nothing. Rodgers throws a touchdown to tie the game. Julius Peppers sacks Aaron Rodgers again. Poor pass protection is really limiting what Green Bay's offense can do. Casey Hayward would pick off Jay Cutler. Hayward does a great job in zone coverage, isolating Devin Hester. It results in a Packers interception. Aaron Rodgers to James Jones. Jones' second receiving touchdown in the game. Green Bay leads 14-7. Third quarter, Green Bay leads 21-7. James Jones with another receiving touchdown. Nick Roach recovers a fumble in the play. Chicago had a chance to close this game make it closer. Alshon Jeffrey, the boneheaded play, he's called offensive pass interference, and it was the one play where he broke free of Sam Shields, but he pushes Sam Shields on the ground. The play does not count. No touchdown for the Chicago Bears. Fourth quarter, they get two field goals. It's too little too late. Green Bay had this game secured with a 21-13 win. Rodgers, 23 for 36, three passing touchdowns, no picks. Despite poor pass protection, James Jones, he caught three receiving touchdowns, yet he dropped multiple passes even after reeling in three receiving touchdowns, which explains why Jones got held to only 60 receiving yards in this game. The Green Bay Packers clinched the NFC North. This is Chris Ransom of Draft Utopia. This is our NFL Holiday Edition Part 1. Tune in tomorrow. You'll catch Part 2.